Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So we're doing 2020 readings and the first one I'm going to be doing is this one and we're asking the question, what will our love lives be for us in 2020? Or what will love bring us in 2020? What can we expect in terms of our love lives? And this could uh, apply to you if you are in a partnership or if you're single um, or if you're in a complicated situation. Whatever your situation is, this is what you can expect in terms of love this year. And we have eight options here and we're using the Norman decks today. So um, yeah, we have option one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you may pause the video at this moment and make your selection. I'm gonna go right ahead and begin with option number one. So for those of you who've chosen the first option here, it's the mini vintage Lenormand. Okay, we're asking the question, what can we expect from love in the year 2020? What can we expect in the year ahead in terms of love? So actually this video is timeless. You can come to it at any time. We're asking just generally, what is going to happen in terms of love in the year ahead of us? And whether that year for you is, begins in August or in March of whichever year is irrelevant. I'm posting this obviously in January of 2020 because I would like to bring this to my regular viewers. Um, so once again, for those of you who have chosen the option number one, what can you expect in terms of love this year? It's the first card here. The second has flown out. Oops, another one has flown out right here. I'm going to take that one. Okay, so we have five cards which are going to tell us a little bit about the year ahead in terms of love. So the way in which I feel that you start the year is, is not necessarily um, very joyful. There's a kind of heavy, a sense of heaviness here. There's a sense of not really being sure of where you stand or not really being sure of what is required of you. So as I said at the beginning, at the introduction, this reading uh, applies to you if you're in a relationship or if you are single. And so this is very much that energy that you you almost feel burdened or you feel uncertain or you almost feel quite um, quite down upon yourself or not really sure of how to move things ahead it all feels quite heavy quite burdensome and you're not really sure how you can shift the situation but interestingly enough as you go through the year the situation shifts by itself and it shifts in a really really nice way uh, in that there are more social social interactions and there are more opportunities to be able to meet somebody. If you are in a partnership, this means that there are more opportunities for you to go out and have fun with each other and be able to enjoy each other and almost bring it back to a time where there was lightheartedness in your relationship. And so there is definitely that also. So I would say this would be around um, March, April, May perhaps. And I feel that as June or July approaches, there's a different energy. It's almost as if there's a kind of a feeling of dominance, a feeling of dominance as far as uh, oneself is concerned. So this is like, this is regardless of your gender, but there is a feeling that you become the important person, that you um, put yourself first and there is a recognition of yourself and it's necessary for you to put yourself first. There's almost like a discovering of yourself and there's almost the sense that you are uncovering an aspect of yourself that you haven't really understood thus far. There's also this feeling that what, your, what are your priorities and what are your goals? That comes into focus. But as that comes into focus, for those of you who are partnered during this time, 
the needs and the goals of your partner also come into focus. So it's almost like you're aware of their needs and you, because you are able to see and understand your own needs better, you are able to understand their needs better. So it's like you develop an extra layer of empathy and compassion and by giving yourself and taking care of yourself, by giving yourself what you need and taking care of yourself, uh, you find that you're more aware and more able to be able to take care of those around you. Yeah, as you head into August, September, October, I feel that the what, what would happen here is that there's a strength that this understanding has brought you. So around May, June, you'll come to some kind of understanding. This might continue until about July, where you put yourself in focus. And this imbues you with a kind of strength that you haven't had before. And it's almost like you are, you don't need anyone right now, or you don't really know, um, you don't really feel the need to rely on anyone. You are there for yourself right now, and you are there in, in the capacity that you can actually um, offer something to someone else as well. So it's not only that you are there for yourself, but you have the strength around you. It's like you are taking care of others. It's like you are the mother almost in the situation. And, um, and in a good way, it's not that you're mothering the person or anything like that. It's, it's simply that, well, if there is somebody in your life, it's simply that you have the strength to be able to take care of your needs as well as their needs. Whereas the there wasn't necessarily that feeling before. It wasn't that it wasn't there. It just feels like it wasn't the priority before. And if you are single, well, it feels to me like you don't need to really be in a relationship at this point, or you just don't feel that a relationship is necessary for you right now. You might be concentrating a lot more on yourself, and you have the strength that you haven't had before. So previously you might have been longing to be in a relationship, but or you might have been longing to be with somebody, but as you head into September or October, that need is no longer there. There's a concentration on yourself which has gotten a little bit deeper that might have been moved into action. So it's like you're busy with yourself, doing things with yourself, things that are important for your well-being. And this is a really... Um, strong phase in the year for you, not just in terms of love, but in terms of of, um, of other areas of your life as well. As you round up to the end of the year in November, December, there's a sense of mystery. There's a sense of not necessarily wanting to share yourself with others as much or not necessarily wanting to uh, open yourself up that much. It's like you want to keep something to yourself. So this applies to you if you're single or if you're in a partnership. But um, if you're in a partnership, it might be that you feel inclined to keep secrets during this time. Or you find yourself rather um, you know, speaking some white lies or being deceptive in some way or the other. And it might be that uh, if you're single that you actually lie about whether you're single or not to someone and but it's not you know as trivial as as that in a way or it, maybe that's not trivial but it sounds as if it could be trivial but it it isn't it's almost like there's a sense of wanting to retreat into yourself um in order to uh, re um birth yourself to shed away old skins and to birth yourself anew again so i would say that to summarize this as we head into the year um, it feels a little bit heavy, burdensome. It doesn't feel that easy to get along or to uh, make new friends or to meet new people. And then, you know, around March, April, this is a great time for you to meet someone. And if you do meet somebody during this time, it will be a really interesting summer for you or winter, depending on which part of the world you're in. But it will be a really interesting um, June, July, August time for you. And then Whatever it happens in this in the earlier half of the year, you can be sure that come September, October, you're going to be in a place of strength. And you, regardless of what your, your love status is, uh, or your, your relationship status is, I should say, it's going to be, you're going to be doing fine, okay? And as the year comes to an end, you're going to be seeking to shed old skins and to rebirth yourself. So that was your reading for those of you who have chosen the option number one. I wish you much luck in the year ahead in terms of your love life and everything else. And for those of you who have chosen the option number two, we're asking, what does love hold for us in the year of 2020?
mean to turn them around so that we can read them upright. Um, if I get a sense that it should be read in a non-traditional way, I will do that. I usually read anyway in a non-traditional way. You wouldn't necessarily get the meanings of Lenormand then because I'm very often channeling the readings as opposed to reading exactly the message uh, that these cards give us. It's likely that you'll start the year off um, meeting people, having nice, going on nice dates, being quite sociable and having quite a lovely time at it. So if you're in a relationship with someone specific or if you are single or if you're in a complicated situation where you're kind of hoping that somebody will come around and or you're hoping that you'll come around to that person, then you're likely to meet this person during that time. If you're in a partnership, you're likely to go out quite a lot in the month of January, uh, going on to the mid February or so. And you're likely to have fun times. If you're single and you, you are likely to meet somebody at the beginning of this year already, right now, within the next, between now, um, from the time you see this in the next six weeks or so, uh, it could also be up to like two months or two and a half months. But this is quite a strong feeling here that, that there is going to be a meeting. You're going to meet somebody. So this quickly changes um, because it seems that after you have had this light-hearted, fun, joyful time in the months of January and February, um, March brings with it some, some feelings of it being uh, darker. Darker in the sense that uh, there are things that you were not expecting that you are now you you're now confronted with, uh, not not ne necessarily something negative, but the way in which it makes you feel is that you are you're brought down by it. It kind of puts a shadow over it or um, puts a damper on your spirit, and this kind of energy continues for you until about. Um, I would say the end of May or so, or it could be like it starts around March or so, and then it ends at around end of April or May. Um, but I, I'm reading these quite fluidly, so uh, it really depends on you. So for those of you who only meet somebody uh, around March, this kind of energy could only start by the end of April for you and last till the end of May or so. So it really depends on, you know, you'll you'll get the sense of it when you know how things are going for you. Um, if if January is a very sociable time for you, then this um, energy here is likely to hit you around March. And what are we talking about in terms of this damper? We're talking about maybe uh, if you're in a partnership or well, maybe having some bills to pay that will bring about an argument, having to make decisions which are very heavy on the heart. Uh, maybe there's a, there's a sick uh, elderly family member who needs... Uh, some extra care and attention during this time. So it could come in many different ways, but this this is likely to be a consideration for you. Now, this energy doesn't stay with. Um, it's something that you actually work with and you come out the other way uh, with, a, with more of a feeling of home and more of a feeling of uh, security, of feeling comfort. And I feel that if you're in a partnership that you will work through whatever it is that brings the damper in these months and it'll almost bring you closer to each other. You'll be more intimate with each other and you'll feel a closer uh, connection to each other. If you are, if you've just met somebody and you know, you're wondering where that's going to go and then you find out, you'll find out something about them that maybe you, you wouldn't have liked to hear or it could be that they start showing parts of their personality which is something that kind of, um, I wouldn't say it annoys you, it doesn't frustrate you, it's more like it concerns you. It concerns you, you start, you know, you have like raised eyebrows by what they're doing. And um, come the month of May or, or June, um, Ju May, June, maybe July, the, these kind of months, you're going to find that you you feeling like more of a homebody and you're feeling less sociable, you're feeling less like going out. It could be a time where, depending on how you respond and how you react, to this your this person who you meet and their their changes or this new aspect of their personality, it could actually result in you uh, getting to know them better. Like really, 
th this is like it's almost like a decision time for you because what what it's going to result in is you feeling like a homebody and spending a lot of time alone uh at home and just doing stuff for you or maybe you with like friends or something like this but not really um and family but not really meeting somebody or if you've decided to take this person into your trust and you know come closer to them then it could be that you might be setting up house together already or you might he, he or she might be spending a lot of time in your home or you might be feeling at home with this person just generally speaking or you might be spending time in their home and there's a feeling of being homely with them there's a feeling of being familiar with them um yeah like they're almost a part of this family so it really depends on how you respond to the situation. If you get freaked out and you run away and you know you you're not you're not able to give this person a chance because it's he scares you or she scares you by the way that they've been ha behaving, then this is the, an energy to be enjoyed. This familiar energy is to be enjoyed with fan, friends and family and with yourself. You know, a feeling of solidity within yourself. And this this feeling continues also as the uh, as the year progresses in. August and um, uh, well, I would say September and October here, and this is one of the the earlier an earlier option got this uh, card as well. There's this feeling of being strong and and feeling um, almost like you're in charge and being in control of your circumstances. So I read it a little bit differently for the other card, but for you, I feel like here it's more like um, there's been. It's it's not the most smooth sailing year for you, you know. There are really high points, and then there are points which make you wonder. So it, it, they aren't low points, but they make you wonder and it makes you feel less secure. And so I would say that by September October, there's a sense of you knowing yourself, and this comes here a, a lot from the, the the months before that, the three months or so before that, where you would have spent a lot of time either with this person. Uh, getting to know them better or you would be spending a lot of time with yourself and with people who are really close to you and feeling like you have a home feeling like you can enjoy the comforts of your home feeling like home is something that gives you nourishment and uh, and restores you and so come um September and October you are feeling restored already and in terms of love um there is like a feeling of knowing what it is that you need and what it is that you don't need having strong boundaries having um you know knowing what you what you are um willing to accept or not and it's almost a sense that you are you are standing up for yourself and you you're not willing to to compromise as well there's also that energy here for you uh in this from that that I'm picking up from this card as the year rolls to an end you, there's going to be a little bit of of confusion, I would say, or um, un, not not being clear about where it is that this new relationship that you might have entered to is going, or whether you should get out into the the dating world, or a bit of confusion about your relationship. If you have become a mother in this year or a parent in this year, it might um, leave your, your relationship with your significant other a little bit hazy. So it's not as if something bad is going on or there's a failure in the relationship, there's nothing like that. It's just that you can't really see where things are going, you can't really feel the, the feet, your ground, the ground underneath you. You're not quite clear, but these clouds will clear up and you know, uh, th but that's uh, something that will take place a little bit later in, and that's the energy that will bring you to this energy, this cloudy kind of hazy energy, not knowing where you stand, not knowing where, what to, what to feel or or how to feel. It's going to be more prevalent around November and December and then the energy will likely shift thereafter. So in summary, if you are in a relationship, uh, it's likely for you to, it's likely you'll start the year off on a good note, uh, that there might be some kind of damper along the way, there may be a need to refurbish your home or to, um, or to welcome a new, a little one into the home, or a, a feeling here that home is quite an, um, an intimate space to be in, it's quite a comfortable space to be in, it's quite a nurturing space to be in, and actually um, drawing strength from that. And then as the year comes to an end, well, you know, confusion about how to go ahead or what to do and need, the need to find uh, clarity as far as that is concerned. And if you're single, well, basically, it's a good time to mingle in the month of January, February, beginning of, of March, 
don't let um, any kind of things that or attributes characteristics of anyone you meet that you might be interested in put you off um, keep an open mind about that if it really scares you then you know obviously don't stick around but uh, keep an open mind because they may be able to offer you something a little bit more if you're just able to step over this hurdle and um, you might find that you could get closer to them and in getting closer to them it's almost like you understand yourself better as well this is in a way similar to the previous reading for that that aspect anyway and then you know where, where you're headed to with this person is something that you need to ask yourself as the year draws to, to an end now there is also a chance here that if you're single you get to meet a lot of people or you get to to um, spend some time outdoors or you know in social settings as the year as you start the year and then you kind of get bogged down with uh, responsibilities perhaps work related family related and then um, you know you don't really feel like going out and mingling and then as the year comes to the to an end it's almost like you're wondering well should I put myself out there again or how will the year uh, unfold how, how will what, what do I really want do I want to be in a relationship or how do I feel about this situation so that's your reading for those of you who've chosen the option number two. I hope that's been helpful and I wish you all lots of luck and lots of love, beautiful love and a good time in 2020. For, for those of you who've chosen the option number three, be asking what does love hold for us in the year 2020? Okay, so actually with you guys, uh, whoever's chosen this option really seems to have a nice year in terms of love. This is probably the message that you come to the reading hoping to hear. Um, the others are not as positive as this, but you know, the others are a bit more uncertain and you know, there's a chance, but there's not really a chance. But here you have a very, very strong possibility of meeting somebody in the early part of the year, falling in love with them, um, or, or meeting with somebody that you know already and having love being established between March, April, May, and um, and then having to make a decision as June or July rolls around, and you know having to really make a decision as to which which direction you're going to go in. So this might be that you are you know you you're choosing to uh, to to move in with each other, or or if you are like working in different countries or in different cities, it might be that you you're wondering whether you should come together, you're wondering whether you should move together. And there's a chance that you could uh, meet with each other. Um, if you're at a distance from each other, there's a chance that you can meet with each other around um, between August and like October. And um, and yes, but if you're not, if you're single, so I'm just reading for you if you're single right now, not if you actually are in a partnership, I'll get to that in a moment. But here, um, there's a lot of discussion and a lot of chatting, uh, a lot of communication, a lot of um, enhanced, jovial, excited communication here uh, between the months of September, October, and um, maybe even starting around August. And it's almost like, uh, the, yeah, it's almost like you made this decision and then there's like this chatter. And uh, this is something where, you know, you it could lead you uh, into meeting with meeting with each other or it could lead you to seeing each other more regularly uh, or, but it definitely leads you to making some kind of decision or that you have made a decision already that leads to that or this is uh, supporting a decision that needs to be made and ultimately there's just happiness and, and warmth and joy to be experienced as you round off the year as you head off into um, November, December there's a really good sense that um, you're going to enjoy your partner a lot um, you're going to be very much in love you're going to be feeling very happy it's going to be blissful it's going to be really good 
Now I wish that all the readings could be like that, but uh, unfortunately um, they're not always like that. But this is really almost a perfect reading. Now if you are in a relationship with somebody, it's like you start the year off on a, on a good note. You are traveling with, perhaps with each other, not very far. Like I would say like you're going out, um, like you're going on dates with each other. Or you're, going, uh, you're going to the theater, or you're going to the next town to visit an exhibition. They're those kind of things. So maybe you're going to a, a football match or something in the next town. It's something like you, you're getting out and you're doing things with each other and you're just you're moving beyond your usual comfort zone so to say and this like this love that you have between you is kind of reinforced and um, really made to feel as if it's something quite permanent. It's solidified, it's cemented and uh, yeah, and then there's still for you also a decision to be made. And I feel here there's like a decision to be made in terms of whether you move in with each other, whether you move house, or whether your partner takes a certain job, or whether you take a certain job that moves you away or changes your routine in some kind of way. There is some kind of big decision that needs to be made um, come June or July, maybe even up to August. Or it can't, this energy, you might know about it already from May. Uh, and there's a decision that would need to be made at that point. And then it feels like uh, there's a lot of, it could be, it could be with the relationships. It, I feel like there's, there's two things here. Like with, with, if you're single and you're meeting this person, I don't feel like there's arguing and, and squabbles, but I feel like you're there from the decision that's been made, it kind of leads you to arguing a lot and squabbling and kind of disagreeing with each other. But all's not lost because as you end the year or as you come to the end of this this time you're going to find that um you you're going to be happy you know it's going to be like home sweet home everything's blissful everything is wonderful and you're more in love than ever and um you're just really enjoying each other's time and you're enjoying the festivities and um you are happy to be with each other. For those of you who are in kind of complicated situations and you are, you know, you've been perhaps waiting for somebody to come along or something like this, there's a good chance that you'll meet between now and March or the next, say, six to eight weeks, uh, maybe it's, um, up to like 10 weeks, even so. So I'm getting different time frames for different people. So I feel like it could be six weeks or some up to like 10 weeks for others or so even like in, into 12 weeks so and then it feels like there's a love that's blossoming but then it feels like there's a decision to be made so I feel like here you're backtracking with regard to this you're not really sure about this person and then there is a lot of chatter you might be at a distance from each other and the chatter is like text messaging or, or something like that and it's it all ends well uh, how you end the year or how you come to the end of the year uh, November and December is actually on a good note and you're feeling quite happy and it's you're happy with it you might not be together because you might be at a distant a distance but you are somehow happy you're satisfied you're content and you are you um, feeling blissful actually so that's the the nicest reading so far and I hope that you have a fantastic year ahead in terms of love and wishing you all the best from Kismet Rising if you've chosen the option number four, the question we're asking today is, what can we expect in love in the year 2020 or in the year ahead? There was way too many, so I'm just going to continue shuffling. Okay. All right, so your love here feels to me like 
um, this this kind of love relationship here f feels to me like some kind of soul connection, like what some of you may refer to as a twin flame relationship, or some kind of relationship that somehow has difficulties, but you are comically connected to each other. So the way in which the year starts off for you is that there's something eating away at you. It's something quite not clear about what it is that you need, what it is that you want, and something that you don't have that you desire, but you're not quite sure of how to go about getting it. It's almost like it's not in your control and there's nothing that you can do about it. And then, the, and this is like for the first uh, two to three months, and then as you end March or, um, well, in March, April, May, you'll receive a message which will change things for you. And um, this will bring a very clear feeling of love or a notice of love, which will be, it's kind of almost like you've been hearing from somebody who you haven't heard of from in a long time and you didn't, well, we weren't sure if you'd ever hear from them again. And um, it's, or you might be in touch with them, but it's like they are, but they're not really offering themselves to you or offering their love to you. And then they do offer their love to you. And in the months of June, J July, coming to August, what you have here is a feeling of, of real love, really being madly in love again and feeling very excited, feeling very happy about that. There's a feeling here that as the year continues into September, October, that this love that you have here has a, a long-term feel for it. It could be something that could, it's like it could be an eternal love. It could be something that would last a long, long time. And you're very much um, feeling that. You're almost weighed down by that in the months of uh, September and October. It's almost like that weight, the weight of, of, of knowing that or feeling that is dragging you down in some way. It gives you a feeling of, be, of like some kind of ethereal feeling. But at the same level, it kind of makes you... Um, it doesn't help you to enjoy it as much because here in, in June, July, August, I feel like you're enjoying the love a lot. And then it, this is a much more serious uh, feeling here. It's more about responsibility and legacy and, and you know, what the responsibility of this relationship. So, um, and, and I'm talking just about those of you who are not in relationships right now, and I'm going to continue just now um, and address those who are in relationships. So this is for those of you who are waiting for somebody and they haven't really um, been in contact with them or they are just hoping that this love this love will come to you. And I feel that as the year comes to a close in November, December, it comes to a close in a very nice way because there's almost a gift. There's a gift of something. There's a feeling that, it, I wouldn't say it's commitment, but there's a, there's a something sweet that comes out of it, something that makes you feel really happy. It makes you feel really loved and it makes you feel special in the eyes of the other. It makes you feel as if you are special in the eyes of the other. Now, if you are single and you are hoping that there will be love, you will most likely have love, okay? Although it might be that you are beating yourself up about not being in a relationship or wondering when that will happen and you're giving yourself a hard time of, and that energy will continue till about, um, in, to, for another 10 weeks or so. But later on, after that, the, the energy is going to change and it's going to shift. And this energy here is very heavy, but that is quite different. Even this energy, which I mentioned was a moment ago, was a little bit heavy. It's heavy in a loving sense. It's heavy in terms of responsibility, but not. it's not burdens. It's not hard. It's not eating you away. It's not destroying you in any way. Now, for those of you are, who are in partnerships, what I find here is that it might be going, you might be going through some difficult moments, okay? And as we enter the year, you may be doubting your partner. There may be some things that your partner is doing that is uh, upsetting you, annoying you, frustrating you, uh, eating away at you, and it's almost as if it's uh, diminishing you, okay? But there's either flight, you either leave, or you um, you leave this person, you know, there's a chance that you might leave this person, or there's a chance that you may physically leave this person, go on a holiday by yourself, or with some friends, or you just go to away for a work-related thing, and in this time, you're likely to receive a message uh, which puts a different light on everything and it brings love into your life. Now, the, the, for there's so many of you who, who are going to watch this and I feel that the, 
the answer here is quite different for all for for you so you it feels like this thing is eating you away right and then you leave it could be that you leave like in january february march and then it could be that you leave this person okay and then you find love as the time goes on or it could be that you leave this person and then they come to visit you wherever you have moved to and then the love reignites itself and then because of history and because of an eternal bond that you have um you choose to make things up okay so there's this feeling as the year ends that you know quite a sweet feeling once again quite a, a, a warm feeling and it feels like things coming together really well um and you can just enjoy it there's nothing heavy about it there's nothing hard about it you can simply just enjoy uh the time that you have now um the another way of reading this for those of you who are partnered is that you start the year off and something's really annoying you about this partnership or something's annoying you and it's impacting the partnership and you get a message from somewhere else not from your love but from somewhere else and this puts a different light on things and you start feeling differently and then you're able to feel the love in your relationship once again and you decide to take things a little one step um um deeper or, or you know uh, to go deeper into this relationship and you make a decision about that or you come to a realization that this re relationship is really quite important and the way in which the year ends once again for all of you uh whichever option you or whichever category you fall in is in a, on a warm note on something that really feels makes you feel special and uh, you know that you feel that you are special in the eyes of the other okay so i'm going to leave you with that that's a nice way to end the year even though we've just started it right now there's definitely love in this in this year for you and a feeling of legacy in terms of that love so feeling of eternal love and um and hope here and messages which uh, bring peace and harmony and love all right, so I wish you all a wonderful year ahead. I hope it's going to go really well for you in terms of love and in everything else too. So if you've chosen the option number five, the question we're asking here today is, what can we expect in terms of love for the year 2020? So I'm going to read here first for those who are in partnerships and then I will address those who are single, okay? So for you, those of you who are in partnerships, this year starts with you being quite close with each other. And I feel that you can enjoy a few months of that, of this closeness with each other, a sense of um, belonging to each other, a feeling of really understanding each other and really almost like completing each other's sentences knowing what the other person's feeling and thinking and being able to decipher and interpret the subtext between you two. It feels to me that as uh, the year progresses, as we come into March and um, April, May, perhaps more like April and May, it seems to me that there are some burdens to bear and some crosses to bear. And um, it's as if you need to have quite serious discussions with each other about this. So it could be that there is a frustration about commitment here that that comes up in the month of May or in April. Or it could be that there's a move that's indicated but is it's it's causing some difficulty. Or there's there's some kind of move or or travel that or a move 
yeah, it's like move more than travel, that that creates some kind of difficulty. And, um, th but this is something that passes quite soon, but it's something that you have to face together and it burdens, it causes a strain in the relationship. And I feel here that you're going to be fine. You're going to come through that okay. And it's something that, you know, your relationship weathers quite well. As we come into June or July, there's, there's a sense of being certain, being clear about the relationship and where it's headed to. Uh, there may be a commitment that's uh, indicated here. It might be that your partner takes extra care to let you know how they feel about you. And it might be that they pop the question during that time. It might be that they decide to ask you to marry them, to enter into a permanent partnership with them. I feel that this will happen quite quickly. And as you enter into September and October, it's as if you are actually together or engaged or even married. Or even, if not, uh, if you're not married as so soon, then it could be that you are uh, living with each other or you've announced to the world that you are to be together. In your heart, you are anchored with that person. That is around September, October. And I feel that as you come to the end of the year, November and December, the sweet love that you've experienced through the year has actually turned a bit. It's not as sweet anymore because your concentration is not in love anymore. It's more on the challenges that need to be faced. And this is, you know, quite normal in relationships that you have challenges that you need to overcome. You may need to solve certain uh, problems, overcome certain obstacles together. And that seems to preoccupy your, you and your partner in the months of November and, and December. So this is something that you will be facing together. What you have with each other is a sense of closeness and belonging. There's this commitment that's in the year as well. But along the way, there are things that you need to be concerned about here and here in the months of March, April, maybe May, or um, year November, December. So I'm not saying you're going to have five months of horrible stuff. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying this energy is going to be like that during this time. Now, you might be an eternal optimist and you don't see anything as being a burden and you won't even feel this energy. But if you're prone to of bearing the difficulties that life brings you, then you actually might find that this is becomes quite stark, you know, the feeling of closeness in the, in the relationship and the contrast between that and and the, the difficulties that you need to face are quite st stark. So it really depends on how, um, yeah, on, how, on your lens and how you actually view the situation and how you're perceiving it, it how you take it in your stride, whether you're taking it in your stride or not. Regardless, there is commitment in the cards for you this year. And isn't that lovely? Although with that commitment comes obstacles that you must overcome together. All right. Now, for those of you who are single, I feel that I feel that there may be like there might be an a, an old relationship or an ex that's hovering around, and uh, there may be some gossip around that, or and that's getting you down, or maybe you've found something out about your ex that's upsetting you, and that's going to be coloring your first few months of the year. Now this this uh, up till about March, and this is not necessarily the, true for everyone, of course, but it feels here to me that. You might be single, but your heart is still with somebody else because, or you're feeling burdened by an old relationship. So maybe you're in a situation where you need to pay some kind of maintenance, like child maintenance or alimony or something like this, and you're burdened by this. Or maybe you're legally married to this person, uh, but you are not in that relationship emotionally. It, the, the first part of the year is colored, is colored by that. Although, for some of you uh, who are single, there is a chance that you could meet somebody who you will immediately get into a relationship with in the first month, uh, month and a half, I would say, between now and uh, if you're watching this in January of 2020, till about the end of February, there's a good chance that you'll meet somebody and you get directly right into a relationship. And that could also talk, cause people to talk and there to be gossip around, which would cause be a, a cause of concern for you. Now, I feel here that if you don't meet somebody in, in January, February, you will definitely meet somebody here um, in the in the months of uh, June, July, August, September, October. These are months where 
you're very likely to meet somebody that you will enter into a long-term relationship with, or you might hastily enter into a long-term relationship with this person and then discover that their things are not as uh, simple as they may have appeared, that there are more uh, difficulties uh, that you need to encounter. Maybe you decide to marry this person, but then you realize that um, the administrative aspect of marrying this person is really hard or just, you know, that you have to deal with all the bureaucracy. And so that becomes your obstacle. But as you end, uh, come to the end of this year, you do have some kind of obstacles that you need to overcome. But there's a good chance that you will be in a committed relationship before the end of this year. And it will be, have a very different energy the second half of this year compared to the first half of this year where there's... Um, it's like you, you you know you're not necessarily happy there's a feeling of being down there's a feeling of being torn down there's a feeling of people chatting about you um or or you thinking maybe you think i'm seeing this from your perspective right so maybe you think that people are saying things about you and it's not really uh, that's not really as it is maybe you just feel that way but it's not really as it is there seems to be somebody who comes along and sweeps you up your feet, off your feet, though, and it's up to you whether you choose to go with it. I see that you would be quite willing to go with it, but um, just uncover some of the stones before you do that, because you might find that it will be an unpleasant surprise waiting for you a little bit later if you don't, okay? So I hope that's been useful for you, and I wish you a wonderful year of love. It's a pity that you have these kind of cards at the beginning. This is this could be a card of partnership as well, but it feels to me when I put it together, uh, for those who are single, it is a very different energy than for those who are in, in partnerships. So, uh, well, regardless, I hope that it is a wonderful year for you. And uh, congratulations to you guys who do get married here uh, in this year. All right, I hope that was good for you and I wish you all the best for 2020. For those of you who've chosen the option number six, we are asking, what does her love hold in store for us in the year 2020? Or what is in store for us in terms of love in 2020? You can also access this reading at another time. It is timeless and you can use it for whenever you want to ask about whichever year you come to this video. So in this reading, I'm going to actually read the message um, because it's for both of you, for both groups, those who are partnered as well as those who are single, because it feels to me that the message is very similar. So we start off the year in Jan between January and March with a decision having to be made or a path that's been taken, a path that's been taken that is um, almost irreversible, a path which you decide to leave a certain situation or you've, you've actually um, uh, in a space where you've made a decision to go to move to greener pastures and you are moving out of that situation. For those of you who are single, it should be a time where there's quite a lot of, uh, between January and March, there's a lot of socializing, there's a lot of dates uh, that you might be going on, there's meeting lots of people, networking. As we roll into April and May, you're going to find that you're going to be breaking away from some of that socializing. And for those of you in a relation, who are in a relationship, you might be choosing to change the nature of your relationship, to be less outgoing, um, perhaps to spend more time with each other. It could also signal that you may break up with each other. You may choose to go in different directions here. Because as I see, as we come up to the months of June and July, I feel that there's a decision to be made uh, where you have to go in either one way or the other. And the, you can't go back as far as this is concerned. You actually have to make a decision and do go one way or the other. So there may be a way in which you are, you, you could actually go both ways, right? But you can't, you can't stay in this place. So what I mean by that is like, you could choose to be go there as well as there, but you can't stay here anymore. 
this road parts and that's the end of something. So June, July, August signals the ending of a relationship or the ending of a certain way of being. So if you have, um, you know, been socializing a lot in your relationship and you've been spending quite a lot of time with others, you might change that and it might be that it changes the relationship quite permanently uh, as a result and you may cut away that from the relationship. But if you're single, it's as if you've chosen a different path and you might actually move. You might actually move to a new location where you are not um, meeting the same people. Or you're not in the same dating scene as previously. Now, this card could mean so many different things for so many different people. The one general meaning that I could give you is that there's a decision to be made and the decision takes you away from the space that you're in right now. Oh, it takes you away from the from what you have or what is familiar to you. It takes you to somewhere new. And it could be that it's something that you're visiting, revisiting if, from the past, but it's something that is, you're changing the status quo, okay? That, that is basically the nutshell energy for the for the month of June, July and August in terms of love. Now, come September or October, there's a message that comes in that changes things. For some of you who are splitting up, it, it might be because it, you've had an external relationship, like an extra marital affair, or it might be that um, you've cheated on that person or they cheated on you in the early months of the year, and that leads to the breakup and the move and the and the you know separating and then you come into September October and it's almost like uh, there's a letter that arrives that makes you quite happy and it could be like a huge chunk of money in terms of the settlement for the breakup that makes you happy it could be that um, this person wants to rekindle with you that you they're hoping for your forgiveness and then for those of you who are single it could be that you actually receive a letter of love from someone. Now I feel for some of you it might be from someone that you know already and somebody that you actually was thinking about or you've thought about previously and it, you receive a note from them. You receive some kind of text message or a, a letter from them and um, yeah and it's surprising and it's nice and it makes you feel like there's love again but whatever it is this makes you feel happy, quite happy actually. As you roll down to the end of the year, to December, November or December, there's a feeling of being secure, of being uh, comfortable, of being uh, secure in one's home, in one's four walls, of being well, of having, in this, if it's a breakup situation, you might get the house. Maybe this is a letter that states that you get the house and then you, you do actually get the house. Uh, for those of you who are expecting love, it could be that this message here gives you a new opportunity for to place a home somewhere else or to live in a different space. Um, it could be that um, your love is related to a home in some way. So maybe you're uh, the new person that you meet that comes up here, works in a hotel or in a kind of a bed and breakfast or they work in some kind of house, in a manor house or some kind of large estate. And uh, you may you know, be going there and, and working with them there, or you may have something to do with them. Uh, you may meet them through work-related thing or something like that. So that is, you know, that's quite, a, that's quite a different message there for those of you who are single from those of you who are in relationships. Now, for those of you who are in relationships, it doesn't mean that all of you are going to split up. It might be that you're changing the nature of your relationship. It might be that you go in different paths um, for a while. It might be that as you separate from each other, you are finding new love and a new growth in your relationship. And as you come to the year's end, there's a feeling of being at home, of enjoying simple homely things and uh, the, the, the treasures of being at home and being comfortable and being in a calm, beautiful, intimate and festive environment. And it feels very much like that here. Like you're really going to end the year off on a good note, I have to say. Whereas not all the cards were like that. There's one other deck that's been like that uh, from the uh, from the uh, six that I've read so far. And um, and you, you're going to do really well. So however, the, the beginning of the year might be quite a lot of fun. There may be a move that's made here as well. There's a decision that's made there. Between, I would say, the end of March and um, the beginning, or the the end of March and the end of August, there may be some things that that um, are a bit topsy turvy. 
things are a bit unsettled, maybe in limbo a little bit, some huge changes being made here. But don't let that get you down because as you come to the second half of the year, it's going to be so much better and you're going to feel really well and really secure. And um, I think things are going to turn out quite okay. And in terms of love, this could also mean that you might move in with each other or you might decide to live in a in a place that's uh, closer to each other. So you might move to that, the town that that person lives in or they may move to the town that you are in or something like that. Or you may actually, as I said, move in with each other. So I hope that's been useful for you. I hope that's been a nice reading for you and that you actually, uh, even though the elements are not always very good here, I hope that you actually can get something out of this. At least being forewarned is, um, is you know, is always better. And then you, you can, you know, you can prepare for it. All right. I thank you very much for coming by. For those of you who've chosen the option number seven, what has love in store for you for 2020? Okay, so it seems to me that um, you start the year off on a rocky note and things are not so easy. There may be lots of challenges. Things seem to be physically difficult. So it might be quite strenuous for you. It might be quite hard for you to, to deal with, to cope with. And um, there's something here which you, where there's difficulty, okay? But as, as we get into March, right until about October, we have... Uh, a message here of love. We have somebody riding forth and interested in, in you, pursuing you, and we have luck on your side. So we actually have a situation where things are going to work out your way. So whatever you're de dealing with in terms of love um, in the beginning of this year, what, whatever situation you're dealing with, also not in terms of love, come October, September, October, it's definitely going to be out of your, your, your way. And it's already gonna start changing by March. And so this is the love that you encounter here. There's going to be some kind of opportunity in terms of love that's going to be quite, it's going to be quite buoyant for most of the year. However, coming towards the end of the year, you might find that this love fizzles out. Now, don't take my word for it. It might also be that there's something that comes to an end. It might be that the the flirtatious aspect of this relationship comes to an end. It might be that um, that changes so that you can move into something better. Now, for those of you who are in relationships already, it feels like you are going through a rocky time, that you are going through some obstacles, you are facing some difficulties right now. And it feels, it seems, it seems to me here that by March, April, May, there's going to be some kind of letter, some kind of message from your loved one or from someone around you, which is going to change the game a little bit. It's going to make things feel quite different. And as the months proceed, you are going to have a, a, a deeper interest in your loved one and they're going to have a, a deeper interest in you as well. And this could also be a really good time in terms of erotic matters uh, for you. And um, it feels to me that things are really good, you know, between you from March until about October. And um, in terms of communication, in terms of the erotic aspects of your life, in terms of adventuring, in terms of travel, in terms of um, understanding each other's needs on, an, on, a, on, on various levels. Now, it might, it might not be a very tender time. It might be a very um, a time where you actually understand each other's core needs, etc. But you do understand something about each other and it's it's you understand something new about each other and it's actually a very lucky time for you as a partner. Now, coming towards the end of the year, November, December, something changes in your relationship, something ends. Now, it not, doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship ends, but there is a kind of transformation of this relationship. So it's either that you guys, um, you as a couple, decide to actually move uh, and change something or you decide to you know, deepen your commitment to each other. You decide to change the nature of your relationship in some way. But it doesn't feel like it's sad because it's followed by a lot of luck here. And it feels like, almost like there's, like you are, 
if you're in a partnership, it feels like you're moving in a different direction from each other. And it's like, if you are coming to an end, it's almost like it's necessary. It's almost like it's ordained. It has to be that way. But it's not a sad thing. And it's not something that, uh, there's nothing here to be sad about. I mean, the, at the beginning of the year, there are a few things to be sad about uh, because it's not really so easy. But as you go towards the end of the year, even though that is a card um, of ending the coffin, it isn't a an ending that is severe. It is something that transforms and can be reborn. Okay, so um, for those of you who are uh, single, um, Yes, there is a chance that you could meet somebody and you could have a really wonderful time with them. Whether you decide to take it further or not is uh, up to you at the end of the year. So I hope that's been helpful for you. And I hope that, um, yeah, I let me know of what comes to pass. And I hope the situation eases uh, for you in the upcoming months. Ah, there's one more thing I want to say here. For those of you who are struggling, waiting for somebody to contact you, it might be that this contact comes after a very long time and then this person comes forth and they want to be all there and they are showing you a lot of attention and they are really you know you feel very lucky because of that but it's almost like um, you're not really sure of whether to accept this offer ultimately so you might enjoy a few months of enjoying having them back in your life but whether you choose to have them in your life or not uh, remains to be seen it could be that you and you and them decide to transform your relationship into something more serious than this but um it's not clear okay so thank you very much for coming by i hope that has been helpful and wishing you a lot of beautiful love in 2020 and for those of you who've chosen the very last option here the number eight we come finally to the end of this video <laughs> so the question we're asking here right now is what is in store for you in terms of love in the year 2020 or in the year ahead, simply. So this reading is timeless. You can come to it at any time and it should be relevant to you at the moment at which your intuition seeks it out. Okay, so we have travel. Okay, so this is a really a lovely, lovely reading. I mean, there is a card of some kind of thing, something being cut away here, but I feel this is just an absolutely lovely reading. So it, the year starts off with, um, the year starts off with a travel. So you might be leaving, if you're in a relationship with somebody, you might be leaving them at this point and you might be finding yourself or you might be meeting somebody else in as the months go on. Um, and there may be a, like a kind of final breakup um, between you and that person, but it's all good because it's something that you really desire and you're very happy doing this. It's this feeling of contentment, bliss, absolute joy and happiness. And there's also loyalty and friendship here. So it feels to me in, so, in some cases it might be a relationship that you move away from, you decide to cut away from it, and you end up being friends, and it's all good. You're very happy about this situation. It's the best way it can be. And the loyalty, the, the commitment that you have to each other is an eternal bond, but uh, there's no longer going to be a relationship as such. Now, for those of you who are single, it feels to me that a voyage taken in the months of January, February, or March will lead you to meeting somebody new or at least being in the environment or in the place or that location at which there is a good chance that you would meet somebody new. Now meeting this new person leads you to changing something in your life quite drastically. Uh, so you might decide to move there permanently or you might decide to cut away an old love that's just been hanging on by a thread and or somebody or some memory of an, an, a love that you've been hanging on to. Or you might decide to cut away that single life that you've been having. 
and you have simply happiness, joy, and a lot of uh, beauty, lightness, lightheartedness in your, in your life in come September, October, and as we end the year in November, December, there's really a feeling of being cared for. There's a feeling of being guarded in terms of being safe. There's a feeling of being protected, I mean, not guarded, but a feeling of being protected, a feeling of having somebody who has your back. There's this, uh, you know, having found a friend and a lover, not just a passionate love, but a friend and a lover. And there's also a feeling here of having, of knowing this person in past lifetimes. And getting the sense of uh, deja vu um, during many, many times, many times here. And this all starts off with this with this voyage that you take. So it might not be overseas. It might just be that you take uh, a train to another town or a bus to another town and or something, something here, a move here. Whether it's you move house or you move countries or you taking a journey somewhere, it leads you to a stronger definition of yourself and understanding who you are, which leads you to cut it, cutting away something old and to bring you much joy and bliss and loyalty. Somebody's got your back in all of this. Now, if you're in a, um, another type of relationship here, yeah, let's just say that you are in a, in a partnership. It could be that you decide to travel together between January, February and March, and then during this time that you are there, there is you encounter an ex or an ex girlfriend or boyfriend of your your partner, and there's something that happens here, which finally um, brings your partner or you to cut off that relationship with that ex person or that other person, because it's almost like this person has an influence or an interference, and after that things go really well, and after that. Any doubts that you may have had previously are gone because then you feel more secure within the relationship, okay? So it might work out like that for some of you as well. For others of you, if you are not traveling, if you're not going anywhere at all, you might be journeying within your mind. You might be understanding yourself, discovering yourself. We have a lot of eclipses now and it might be a change that takes place in yourself or a growth um, that takes place within you and this travel that's within you almost and this could lead you to being a different type of person and you're going to be cutting away that which you do not need any longer and bringing in a lot of happiness into your life and with that comes love and friendship so this love and friendship is very heavily indicated for you at the end of the year. And it's not a passionate love. It's more like a happy love. It's like a childlike love, like a love that you can really enjoy, really be yourself with this person. There's no pretenses. You can just really enjoy being with this person and um, simply be happy. Okay, so I hope that's been useful. Um, I hope I've covered all the scenarios here. If I think of any more in the edit, I will um, do a voiceover with it. Okay, so I hope that that's been useful for you and I hope that um, it has been a good reading and I wish you all a lovely um, 2020. May you have all the love that you desire and many, many blessings. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising.